Now, we're here to speak on a Port Royal, and it is a village located at the end of the Palisades, which is at the mouth of the Kingston Harbour in southeastern Jamaica. And it was founded in, well, there we go, I use that word, founded. <laughs> well, founded is the operative in this story, in this phrase. Hmm? So let's just play along, just to keep things moving. It was founded in 1494 by the Spanish. It was once the largest city in the Caribbean, functioning as a center of the shipping and commerce in the Caribbean Sea by the latter half of the 17th century. And it was destroyed by a huge earthquake on the 17th of June, 1692, which had a terrible accompanying tsunami. Welcome to Jamaica, the island of real bad man. Some real dog at you, to some real gang bang. No run for the fair, the knock your bitch man. Stop up! These are the moments when everybody gonna load it. We not instigate violence But we believe in the self-defense No matter what These are the moments When every gangsta gun loaded We not instigate violence But we believe in the self-defense In Jamaica's relentless war and crime The worst criminals End up on the true island stories platform These are their stories I was on a bus coming from Portmore. I went to visit my mom's old daughter. I was coming back. I was on the in a Toyota Coaster bus. It was a one of those buses that runs from um, Portmore to Alpha Tree. I, when the bus reached the Portmore Mall, that is it just before you go on the toll road, three men tried to get an entry to the bus. But the driver saw what was happening, drove off. Only one get get got to keep, come on. I was sitting in the bus about three rows from the back on the driver's side. He came and sit directly across from me to my left in the row that the doctor usually sits. And he kept looking at me the whole time. He had an heart, I couldn't see his face. But the position at that at times, I know that he was looking at me because the peak turned to, to my direction. Mm -hmm. um, when he reached about the Freeport, uh, just before he reached Hunts Bay, the corner there, a female I suspect that was working with him said, Driver, give me a stop here, sir. And I laughed for a while. I look at her, and at, on the corner of my eyes, I see I saw a shadow. So when I looked to my left, I saw him with the fire. He was getting up with the fireman his hand. He said to me, "Shh," and I nodded affirmatively and said, "Okay." And he took about a half a step and turned back and said, "Hey, police boy, point the gun at me." I said, "Hey, police boy, I'm not here. Dead or for dead." And mm -hmm. I, I had my service pistol. I couldn't draw. I was point, point blank range. So what I did, I just sprang out in my left side. That's when I got the first shot. So I got in my left upper arm. Ran towards him, same way. Tried to lift my left hand. Was useless because they've shot damaged the nerve instantly. Mm -hmm. And I held on to his, got his, his right hand, which had the gun, and put it to my head side. And I had to hold his hand and move it slightly. That's when he got up, shot almost my head. There's a scar right here which grazed my left ear. And the other one was still, we were there, we were there tussling. And he fired one more, which hit me in my left side. I managed to ease him off, I kicked him. His gun fell to the ground. When his gun fell to the ground, he went under a seat. So he was trying to take it up back. I then pulled my firearm, it wasn't charged. I had to make it ready, but when I tried to lift my left hand, it was useless as I said. So I had to run it on my belt parallel to my thigh. That's how I charge it. Yeah. Just run it down, my belt parallel to my thigh down, and charge it. And just, just at that time, I was coming up with his firearm, I guess, to finish me off, and I fired some shots in his direction, and he fell to the ground. Stop up! These are the moments when everybody gonna load it. We not instigate violence But we believe in the self-defense no matter what These are the moments When every gangsta gun loaded We not instigate violence But we believe in the self-defense Welcome to True Island Stories I know you just watched that interview Of that police officer That Jamaican police officer And his 
ordeal that he faced that almost, almost cost him his three points. He was almost robbed of his oxygen in what we can only describe as, trust me, he must either have grave dirt in his top pocket and Father God in his next top pocket. Because that situation could have went one of many ways, but luckily the Lord favored him on that day. The universe favored him on that day and he lived to tell the tale in what we can only describe as gallantry, bravery, and I think he deserved a medal of honor. Now, you listen to the story. Now, the guru, I got to bring a big screen away. So, all stool, get in a coffee, get in a bread, for waiting on a tea, get in a beverage, all who no get ice and go back ice run a marine them round there. So, you understand me, in a marine them shop. You, you see me? Yeah. Guru, I go bread back it down, phone no, and go no eat the guru style, the real bread back dungings, as only I alone can. Because God gave me an ability to immerse myself upon the scene. And it's like I can see the thing happen. It's like I can place myself in the situation. And then we can bring it and put you guys in the situation. But before I go, a disclaimer. Sometimes I tell you some things, you know. And sometimes some people believe. Sometimes some people don't believe. Sometimes when I do story, people think, oh yeah. Go read the story, I do story upon Moby, I do story upon Six, I do story upon G City, the man squashed the Miami Cabaga. Look upon the next video like this. YouTube strike the video again. But yet still, me do part three. Them go to strike it. Remember them strike several of the videos that I do upon G City. But me still do it, you know. You understand me? So I do that. And I like me a gain financially from it, you know. But people have to know our history. And whether you like it or not, you know, bad breed. Six, them a part of our history, maybe the dark part of the history, but somebody have to tell them story. So hopefully one day my body will work, maybe somebody internationally will recognize it, you know, and maybe one do a movie from one of my story them, or even one of my brothers them that does the same thing like me, you know what I mean? Maybe me are the one, maybe I on the spot, maybe I my views, maybe I serve P. Or any, you know what I mean? But you never know. So we keep doing it, doing it. So just to get it clear, people, me show no, me no I think so I'm not me no more than nobody. And say a big producer or a film company link me a foreign. I want to do a movie, pan, you know, one of the gangsters, them a mobile. You never know. I want to do a ducky drama. And them link to Island story. What do you think me gonna do? You think me gonna just hoard everything for myself? No. Me gonna pass on the glory. If I bad breed, me gonna reach out, try reach out and say, yo brother, this can serve on the community, you know. Boom. Them I go eat too. If I six G City, them I go eat too. Me now go hoard it for myself. Because who can tell their story like them? Come here, we can tell peace at them history. If a Rockford, if a Dunkirk, if a Tivoli, you know, if a Warthouse badness, and them reach out to me, me go try to contact somebody, a main personnel from down the side and say, yo, link the money, you know. You see me? Maybe they want the story from me, but me go reach out and share the glory. So sometime, brother, out of everything where you might say bad, good can come out of it. Because so the universe work. So, only does me do what I do, man. I work an orthodox, man. But at the long game, me play. The long game. Trust me. Look for BMF. 50 cent link. Them, them don't even know so them have a big series for stars. Look how much, you see me, gangster movie come to life. And them eat now. I eat residual. Till them dead. And then pick them the next generation. I go eat after that. Love me. Make me do what I do. Maybe I'm me or the man, brother. For make phone or pick me. Come eat legitimately. Me, me do me I do. Me no more than nobody. Me no do it forget. See much them strike, them strike the pork chops, them, them strike several of them, all the chiller and the one them just strike. Come me do. Enough of them them strike, man. But we still push hard car. Me feel like me owe my fans them. Or put me where me there right now. Me obligated. Until we can find a home where YouTube no trouble with. 
Because when them strike it, you don't get nothing off of it. So I just want to put that out to the people say, the guru will not do this for the money people. We we'll do this out of the love and the support that Uno give me. You understand me? And you have to understand say, enough artists, they are man to go be. I don't care if they come from six, I don't care if they come from Uga Lane, Golf, this and that. If Uno can capitalize on them story where me do and make good out of it, then Uno no know how to use in the head. Because them say a great businessman know when to see an opportunity, seize it with both hands and capitalize on it. Because my fan base might be different from your fan base. And when my story them go, maybe phone of music no go there so. So maybe it can shed light and maybe only can eat financially. I don't nah look for a dollar from no now. No. You understand me? I don't have to big me up, but I know no watch and I know no listen. I just open and enjoy it and appreciate it. And just always know, say, my thing is not for try to get nobody in a trouble. I'm very careful. But sometimes, I'm not perfect. A thing might slip, but a people give me the story. And if I catch it, I carry it. Because I'm not bigger than coming come apologize and say me sorry. Me never that. Me no bigger than no story if you come say I am sorry. Me do that already and me will do that. Keep on doing that. You understand? Because me now go make one story. You see me? But at the same time, the onus is on you out there to stop the violence. The onus is on you, not me. Because me never put no gun in nobody hand. So you have to understand, say yo, Stop the bloodshed. Stop the violence because you have to get it right all the time. Because the minute you get it wrong, remember the police them. They if you slap out man soapy soap. So just know that. Alright? Sorry but me have to just get this out there. Alright, now back to the video wanna just watch. I listened to the video and it was very touching. And for all who have just joined, it's a video about a policeman. You know, talking about his narrow escape from death. And when I listen to the video, I must say with utmost certainty, God was on his side. The angels were covering him with their wings. Now, it's easy for most of us to say what we would have done or what we would have not done were we the one placed in that unfortunate situation. I'm sure someone will to say, Yo, the first thing would I do, uh, if I did the police, I have me a police, yo, would I back my gun from the cinema company bus and, uh, and mass it under my pouch or under my kerchief or under my rag once I see them jump on the bus. And secondly, oh, me don't feel my gun cock already. You know, me not check, not check, you must see, idiot. you know, not check, not check, you mad. And me a police have my big, oh, my matic, me have a cock that. Yo, oh, idiot, man. Yo, <laughs> you don't remember? It's times he come from. Run like a winner. I'm going to eat soup. It's over the soup. Up on mobile. And she said, What happened? And he said, Soup. We run like a boy, I see. And he will jump in while I'm taking all the seat. And he said, Because I'm and khaki. Me say soup, me say me khaki. <laughs> I go so I will have funny wood. I say me, me khaki. You say me do so. I didn't watch on me while me say me khaki. <laughs> Lord God, and you have seen it in my room. Tell the people of story I start up. No, you have a cuss bad one. I sick. I sick. But, but anyway, anyway, no fun at all, boy. Yo, Muda Kaki, you eat chop my right. I would, I would have cocked it. You understand? Let, let's, let's speak in, in proper English here. I would have cocked it. Cocked it. You understand me? Well, I would second that notion, especially as a cop taking a public transportation, especially in that vicinity. No, there's no way you should have boarded that bus without one bullet cocked and ready to bust in a low life pilgrim face brawl in the morning. No way, brother. Him drop he catch this, brother. He come like him that he 
break fast and now wash him and be a gravy the pan. He ball sleep out high man. Unless he thought nothing could or would ever happen to him. And see, that's the thing. Sometimes proper preparation is the key in any and everything. Because if you fail to prepare, then you are inevitably preparing to fail. And that's exactly what that young cop did in that situation. And do you know why? I bet you'd never go on another public transportation or in the public without his gun cocked after that experience. And make sure and put it past safety door. And never do that again. All right. Why did he do it in the first place? Hmm? Hindsight is always twenty twenty. Eh? Whenever we fail to conduct our, in what civilized society refers to as due diligence, you know? Another thing, the time frame in which everything transpired, the frame of mind that he was in at the time. Firstly, he couldn't tell what would have happened or happened how it did. He never thought or expected the pilgrim would identify him, much less try to kill him. He never knows the man that tried to slap him or a man that identified him because the cop did everything right. He remained calm, cool and collective. He kept his composure. And the time and the distance between both of them played a huge underlying factor. Are you following me? The time in which everything happened because sometimes it might sound like it's a long time but everything happened so quick. And the distance between them played a huge underlying factor. Factor, all right, let me continue. It sounded like it happened really quicker than how he replayed it, than how he was telling it in the interview. And I know he was probably gripped and immobilized by fear. And only when he saw that his life was in imminent danger, that's when he reacted impulsively to save his life by pouncing on the individual. And that's when the low life fired and hit him in his left arm, rendering it useless. Hmm. No, that's when he grabbed the shooter's gun with his right hand and a death-defying struggle ensued. Both men were jostling back and forth for the gun. Give me this, give me this, give me that. No, one was trying to kill one and one was trying to save his life. As people screamed frantically in a maniacal mayhem, blood was gushing from the cop's right arm as he fought gallantly like a wounded warrior to the death. Giving up wasn't an option. Giving up meant giving up on life. And that, my friend, was a no-no cookie in that scenario. That was a no sorry Bob as the two gladiators battled on the blood-soaked locomotive. The pilgrim goes a quick boom and squeeze out two sour subs, see though time saw up and the squad goes ha! Not here and look sideways and had skeleton because hey, I'm bite off the side. He was losing blood profusely. And with one last gap, one last please, God, I need your help in this moment. He managed to muster every ounce of strength in his body. And in one final swoop, he swung his dead weight on the low life pilgrim. And lo and behold, the gods had answered his call. The god answered his prayer. The pilgrim devil pipe fell from his deathly grasp. Rang move rally. Now it was a race of death between the two as the gun was right there on the ground in the middle of both gladiators, Pilgrim and the one armed band. Well, band it would be overstretching or overstating it in this scenario. But what the heck? Story sweet. The one armed bandit knew he only had seconds to react. He knew he was too far from the gun on the floor that fell under the seat. And the pilgrim was reaching for it, feeling, stretching. The cop reached for his 9mm service pistol, which was in his waist, and tried to fire it. Dry it out. <coughs> Stick. Then he remembered, oh shit, it wasn't cocked. Now this is an unexpected dilemma. His left hand was useless to him and time was running out. So he had to think on his feet. So guess what he do? He used the belt and put the running board on the gas and cock his gun. Just in time when the pilgrim had grabbed his gun and raised it towards the direction of the cop, determined to finish what he had started. But he was a day late and a dollar shot as the squad got the drop on him and squeezed out every seed out of the sour sap in the pilgrim. Big dot yet, pan the bus, slow almost send him to it. Clump, 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 Everybody had jumped through bus window. Boom, 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 boom. Squaddy broke him in and flying soupy soupy and gene it out like alien moat water. That was the end of the low life pilgrim. Lord, 
Oh, come from. No, the girl who is a main suspect is still being sought by the police. And I must say, if you are listening to the guru, I implore you to give yourself in because the squad of them know your fears. Uh, anyway, them find you. Come, 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 come. Because them know, say. Uh, you did say. One stop driver left me back. Oh, Miss Hadi, your arm so mel. But, let me tell you. Loan darkness when the police do people sketch you. You were warned. And to be warned is to be forearmed. And let me tell you. Because remember, you know. You have some real dopey make a squad you out there when you hear nothing, you know. And guess what them not do? Guess what them not do, no man? Back from the boy, I wanna do that. Boy! Who no can kill with Jai? Who no boy? Back from the boy, I wanna do that. Boy! Who no can kill with Jai? Who no boy? The squad is here, feed them and them this man and some gangs down there. Me don't know, so me don't know and that them are running with some, me don't know. Boy, so to you look up with that big sun there, you go on. But look was on squaddy side on the day because can you imagine if all of them bus half pilgrim there had boarded the bus had the driver not smell the rat we had dead and i think and drove off squaddy probably would not have been here among the oxygenated today standing upright so let this be a warning to every cop every squaddy every lies of fire and water once you step out in the public one of in the head and the sour sap the past safety cause sometimes we only have seconds that determines whether we live or die the guru has spoken we've come to the end of the policeman deathly saga join us for more stories coming soon on the two island stories be sure to like share and subscribe and press that notification bell for more stories and leave your comment and tell me what you think the squaddy would have do. You think him should have one in the head before him go out there? Or him should have a travel with it or him a travel with it? Make me know what you need to do. You understand me? And what I think would have happened if the rest of pilgrim them did board the bus. You understand? And share the story. Remember Darker Side of Paradise out there? Autobiography, epic autobiography, volume 2 is now out for all our volume 1. If you want it exclusive, you know, link up the guru, you get it exclusive for 50 a copy. Smart face and other books out there, you know what I mean, online and all platforms. So support the guru, cause you know, YouTube more time, you know. And if you want your song review, you don't know, link the promo number for the details and no violent song where you kill people and this and that and none of them song we we not do that please we are keep the thing to a level because we are trying to promote certain things and we not promote certain things you understand stay out of trouble you man stay up on the right side keep on the crooked and cut straight because when you're dead in and do your badness guess what when you're dead in and you know nothing in a bed you're rotten and gone in a bed guess what? you left the people and behind to pick up the pieces the mothers the sisters the brothers the fathers the sons you know what I mean? The daughters, we have to grow up fatherless and brotherless, you know, with no structure. You know what I mean? No father figure to guide them, and then the cycle continues again, you know, like a recurring decimal. We don't want that, man. So it have to start with us, it have to start with we. We have to stem the systemic violence that plague with society. You understand now? We have to say a prayer for Moby and everywhere in a Kingston, you know what I mean? Please, stop the violence. You know, if you can't stop, make a slow down on it, you know? And the police force have to start do some more. Army have to start do some more, brother. The heads of government we have to weed out the corruption, kind of corruption they everywhere, brother. And without we stem out that we now go better. We now go better. Corruption they everywhere. You understand? So we have to fight it from within the structure that was organized for fight crime. Before we can go out, they can fight it. We have to look on yourself in the mirror first before we go out the road, pick the bone out of the teeth or you know, the beam out of the eye first. So bless upon yourself. But if you choose to pick up the gun or the knife, then there's a chance you might end up in two island stories. No. Well, we are here to speak on a Port Royal. And it is a village located at the end of the Palisades, which is at the mouth of the Kingston Harbour in southeastern Jamaica. And it was founded in, well, there we go, use that word, founded. 
Uh, well, founded is the operative in this story, in this phrase. Hmm? So let's just play along, just to keep things moving. It was founded in 1494 by the Spanish. It was once the largest city in the Caribbean, functioning as a center of the shipping and commerce in the Caribbean Sea by the latter half of the 17th century. And it was destroyed by a huge earthquake on the 17th of June, 1692, which had a terrible accompanying tsunami. Several hurricanes have regularly damaged it. Another severe earthquake occurred in 1907. Port Royal was once home to privateers who were encouraged to attack Spanish vessels at a time when smaller European nations were reluctant to attack Spain directly. As a port city, it was notorious for its gaudy displays of wealth and loose morals, you know what I mean? Pirates, you know, women and drink, oh, bring me my wine, more meat, get away from me, let me drink. And they'll drink themselves into a drunken stupors and had numerous whores and then count your loots and then go out to sea and, you know, we do the whole thing again. That's what they live for. That was their world. Rob, pillage, plunder, murder, and whore. And uh, let you walk the plank. Well, that was just their world. It was a popular home port for the English and the Dutch sponsored privateers to spend their treasure during the 17th century. When those governments abandoned the practice of issuing letters of marquee to privateers against the Spanish treasure fleets and possessions in the later 16th centuries, many of the crews turned pirates. Okay, let me explain that. When uh, the governments abandoned the practice of issuing letters of marquee to privateers, you had men who were they were paid to hunt pirates, paid to attack other vessels, seize their loot. Yes, that was legal. So when that cessation stopped, now the men were out of jobs. They had a skill set, but had no use for it. Now they had to eat. So they said, look, hmm, now you guys over in England are eating. But we are here stuck with ships and no loot, nothing to, you know, no gainful employment. So guess what? We are going to turn on your ships. And thus began the birth of real raw, raw piracy. There was, pri there was piracy before, but legal piracy. What? We now call it white collar crime back then, if you get what I'm saying. But now it became us against them, mean pirates against the British. <laughs>